Hi, I'm Sharon Calvert, and I'm here at the Tampa 912 meeting here on Tuesday, and I'm here with Ter Terry Kimple. And Terry Kimple is a school board um, candidate. And um, what district are you running here in uh, Hillsborough County, Terry? Yeah, Sharon, it's, uh, first of all, let me say thank you for uh, inter for having me on, for interviewing me. I think this is really exciting. So uh, I'm running for Hillsborough County School Board District 4. District 4 is most of the eastern part of the county from Highway 301 over. There's a little part in the northeast corner that's cut out, so it's kind of like a keystone. But for the most part, if you live east of 301, you're in the district th that I'm running for. Well, great. And, and I heard tonight that, that you've been an advocate for parents and children for over 18 years. So we just have to ask, you know, what then encouraged you to decide to, to take it a step further and run for school board? Well, I'd have to say it this way, that I, I've been doing this for 18 years and I've been going before school boards and I've been going before county commissions and state legislatures and sometimes at the federal level and also with businesses that are, you know, uh, practicing things that aren't necessarily good for the community. And I found that sometimes we win the battles and sometimes we lose the battles. Sometimes our voices don't even get heard. So I started thinking, how could I have the best opportunity, even if people don't wind up agreeing with my message or I can't build a majority, how do I have the best opportunity of getting people to hear the message? I think the best way to hear it is to be one of those people, elected leaders, elected by the people to make the decisions that are, are whatever the governmental body is, but in my case it's school board, because I'm really concerned about our kids. I'm concerned about the educations that they're getting, and I think that we can do better. Um, well, let me just ask you then, you know, are, do you have three top goals or, or changes that you would, that you would pursue? Interesting that you asked me that, and then you said three. I don't think we collaborated on this before, folks, so just so you know. But uh, I have a, a pretty simple ABC platform. A is accountability. And I will say a graphic example. There is accountability, for the most part, at the lower levels in the school system. And keep in mind that there's 25,000 employees in the school system. So there's accountability, for the most part, at the lower levels. But at the upper levels, the accountability seems to go away. And here's the, I mean, the, the proof came last year. We had a, a young girl who died on a bus. One school board member knew about it, and the others didn't even know until much later in the year when a second girl died uh, drowning in a retention pond. In between those two events happening, there was a, another girl who was actually, sh sh and these are all special needs students. I'm sorry, I should have said that up front. There was another special needs student, a girl who was basically shoved off the bus with the foot of the bus driver. The little girl wound up breaking her ankle, and there was another uh, special needs boy who had a sneaker shoved in his face by one of the substitute teachers. So here's what happened. The school board member, let me back up and, sit and, and uh, put a little broader reach on this. So at, when the second girl died, there was a desire or a, a realization of, well, we need to do something and see what the problem is here and see what we can do to fix it. But maybe if they would have uh, started that process when the first girl died, there might not have been the things that happened in, in, this, in the subsequent time frame. Now, I, that's, that's not really the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that one school board member knew about it. It happens to be the school board chairman at that time, and none of the other school board members knew about it when the first girl died. There was no accountability. There was not one, really one question or one serious uh, attempt to extract from that school board member, Candy Olson, why the other school board members didn't know about it. And then the other part of it is the person who was the head of the, the ESE is what it's called, especially education, for, it's the special needs education. Um, and uh, the lady who was the head of that, there was no accountability there either. She got moved to, laterally to another leadership position uh, without there being any uh, consequences for the things that happened under her watch. And I, and I think one of the things is um, the publicity of that, pro, you know, just doesn't seem to have been emphasized. Um, so, you know, uh, accountability absolutely is something that, um, you know, is, is, is definitely needed when we, when we encounter these situations. So what are the other two items? Well, and let me just say one final accountability thing. If you don't have, I mean, I was in the military. If you don't have accountability at the top, how do you expect to have accountability at the bottom? And how do you expect anybody to even expect 
that there's going to be accountability if they see things like that going on and there's no accountability at the top. So the second is budget transparency. You know, the school district of Hillsborough County, last year the budget was $2.86 billion. That's with a B, billion dollars. Almost the same as the county budget for Hillsborough County. And all I can tell you is if you want to try and find out a specific line item in the budget or find out how the money's being spent, it's extremely difficult. I mean, it just really is extremely difficult. So, and, and there's, with that, I mean, to kind of understand, you have to get into the details of some of the things. But as an example, uh, one of our school board members, um, Stacy White, he suggested that grants are pretty much taken care of by staff right now. So, and it's about thirty million dollars of grants every year. And that's the decisions on whether or not to accept the grants and to agree to the conditions that come with the grants, pretty much by staff. And they make recommendations to the board, and then the board board votes on it. Well, Stacy White said, you know, I think that we should have the grants that are a million dollars or more come as separate items to us so that we have an opportunity to vet those things and, and decide on whether or not to do it. He lost. The vote lost. So that's the kind of thing from a budgetary standpoint that we really need to do. We need to have somebody who's going to say, okay, what about this? What about on the school board? We need to have somebody who say, what about this? What about this? What about this? And then there has to be a response. The people... And, and for, for somebody standing on the other side of the podium who's given two to three minutes to speak, it's very difficult to create enough of a push to get some response. But if you're sitting up there and you're one of the seven people who has that responsibility, much easier to make sure that these things come out into the light. And you can actually answer the question when you're asked, when you're asked uh, where's that money going or, or being spent That's on. That's right. Um, so what's your third item? Uh, it was community collaboration. Basically... I've, I, as I campaign, I talk with people, and one of the things that really resounds or resonates or repeats itself as I'm talking with people is that if parents were more involved, if more parents were more involved in their students' education, it would not just solve a lot of the problems we have in the school district, it would solve a lot of the problems we have in our country. So there needs to be a concerted effort on the part on the part of the district to reach out into the community and try and draw people in number one number two to try and minimize the barriers that people tend to feel i want to tell you this if you've ever dealt with a bureaucracy you know that unless you have some significant intestinal fortitude and you have some negotiation skills to try and find out where you need to go, you don't get the answer. So somebody who is really not skilled and doesn't have experience there calls once and they get a, well, you have to talk to Joe and he'll call you back in three days and Joe doesn't call back. So what do they do? Because they don't really know what to do. They could go back to the same person and expect they're going to say, well, you got to talk to Joe and Joe will call you back within the next three days. So we really need to work on that. But actually, since the introduction of Common Core into the into the conversation it's also control you know it's community collaboration and control because if common core is allowed to take root in our community the community loses control this is all driven from the federal level so what do you suggest parents do I mean what we're finding out now is some parents are starting to get educated on what common core is um, and we're, we're unsure exactly where the state's going at this point but what do you suggest parents do you know what? The most effective thing that parents can do is make your voices heard. I mean, that's the bottom line. Now, I've been doing this for 18 years, so I have, and, and that's not that's not a brag. That's just that's just what I've been called to do. So I've been doing this for 18 years. So there will be a strategy that will come out soon. I'm going to a, a, a grassroots training meeting this weekend uh, in order to get more information on, first of all, what. I want to look at it. Are there good aspects of Common Core? I want to know them if there are. What are the bad aspects and what's the impact of those going to be? And then develop a strategy on what we can do, not me, but what we as the community can do to uh, have an impact on the implementation of this system. Uh, if it can be slowed or stopped, I think that it should be until we have an opportunity to find out more about it. Because it kind of snuck in. And uh, folks, this is... Uh, a total rewrite of our education system, total rewrite of our education system with no pilot. You know, there's no pilot. Being right, done. and it's a huge expense as well. Absolutely. So um, it appears right now that if we don't even know what it is, we certainly don't know what it's going to cost. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So let me ask you one more question. Sure. Do you have any events coming up that you'd like to tell us about? 
You know, Sharon, it's nice that you would ask me that. I actually do have uh, a campaign kickoff event in the Valrico area on Thursday night. That would be the 27th. And then I have another campaign kickoff event in the Thonona Sass area, in the more in the Plant City area, on uh, July 11th. So I was just at the office of the, the woman who really has been very instrumental in helping me get my website up. And we're getting more information up there. So hopefully, probably not for Thursday, but before the July 11th event, there will be information up there about that event and other events. The other event is the July 4th parade. So if anybody sees this and they like marching in parades, I've got some beautiful campaign shirts. This isn't one of them. It's going to be this color. It hasn't got the stuff printed on it yet. But I'd love to have you. We had 30 people marching in the parade the last time I ran for office. We handed out a 2,500 business cards to people who were interested. I'd like to have 50 people and hand out 5,000 business cards, so please come join us. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun, and let me just ask you one more question. Sure. My last one. Okay. What is your website? Where do they go? It's voteforterrykemple.com. That's vote and then the number four. TerryKemple.com. And I will tell you, be sure that you put the whole thing in because there's a bogus website out there by somebody who really doesn't like me for whatever reason. And they it's kind of a parody. But if you don't know me, it's not easy to immediately recognize the fact that this is somebody trying to hurt my uh, my opportunity to uh, get elected. So again, vote for TerryKemple.com. Well, thank you very much, Terry. And we appreciate having this interview with you. We look forward to um, speaking to you again in the future. Thanks well, thank a lot. Thank you, Sharon. I really appreciate it. God bless you. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's do more of this because we really do need to get news out into the community that people can use. I agree. Thank you very much.